It's like a combination of a souvenir shop and concentration camp. I can't wrap my head around it all. I really can't. Everywhere you look, the floor, the carpets, the... I don't know. People's calling this the Taj Mahal of Elvis Austin. <laughs> Another thing, I get blown up, I'm put it up in front of This is the neck of Elvis world. The mecca. Yeah, you got it. I've been thinking about it. hanging some midget down here for the Wizard of Oz. Very good. I like that. I was making up some casket for him. <laughs> There's something about his personality and uh, that was so real. And, and, and unreal at the same time. To be honest, it, it makes me uneasy in there. It's crazy that Elvis is the American cultural icon. And there's all this trash, you know, this, but it's an entire house. He constructed a house out of stuff that took two cents to print. what this is about. Obsession, I think. He is passionate about what he believes in to the point where it's obsession and a compulsion and then there's all kinds of thoughts that are going all over the place. And I've never seen anything like it. He got dressed in a white suit and you've seen it. You know what he's doing, don't you? Yeah. Puts every fiber of his body in it, and he's singing, If I Can Dream. dream. You know what he's doing? He's singing about Martin Luther King. Yeah. 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 And I stand in Martin Luther King's blood 44 years ago. I got pictures of it in the house. True story. It come out of my face, I'm giving you a fact. You know, at this best, probably not to, you know, put a label on it. Obsessive cultures. It's kind of weird. I think it's a testament to a decline to have a brilliant mind. I just, I like the sort of the, um, just how everything's in kind of disrepair. It's kind of uh, has its own beauty in that. For most of the tour, I had trouble breathing. I felt disoriented and excited. I was disoriented and I was really confused. And I couldn't really understand a lot of what he was saying, but I was really, I don't know, I was just in awe. A little nuts. But it's great nuts. What do I think about this place? It didn't freak me out because he's tangential in his speaking, so it was a ride. I mean, I was scared. I was scared. I don't usually feel very scared. When we went in the dark room with the photographs of all the people who had been there, I seriously felt for a second like all of those people had been killed. Yeah, no. It's just a little weird when it comes in. It's just like, I got a lot of guns, and he's got like a jail back here. It's weird fantasies of somebody being locked up in there or something. The first thing I thought of, or the last thing too, is a hoarder. You know, the guy's never thrown anything away. It's amazing. I recognized some of the items as things that I have myself. I have a velvet Elvis, I have an Elvis bust, I have um, the wise men, 
that he had. I like the Christmas um, aspect. I'm just trying to, like I say, just trying to preserve his history because fans are coming here word of mouth 24 hours a day worldwide from every city, state, and every country in the world. That's pretty impressive, man. So you're trying to preserve a piece of history here. Paul's been doing a lot for the city of Holly Springs and tourism for, for many years and um, I hope that, you know, that he's getting the, the just rewards and whatnot for such a commitment to uh, Elvis. I hope that he, he uh, you know, stays in good health and, um, you know, is fully appreciated for what he clearly has done here for um, Graceland too. So is there any regrets? No, none. You never look He's back. only born to live to die anyway. Do, do like I told you I'm doing. I'm coming back on Halloween night because Houdini could do it. I am. I'm going to haunt the hell out of both my ex-wives. <laughs> this ought to be turning a damn book and wrapping around a china wall. <laughs>